10 o'clock on the 7th of March 2025 and we're in the wood and this is last year's firewood and I was going to show you a beautiful overwintering hibernated red admiral butterfly but I can't because he's flown off they quite often get in amongst here them and peacocks and they get in your log piles and they sit usually fairly down low but not right on the ground where it's sheltered and it doesn't freeze too much and it's nice and damp so they don't desiccate and they sit there all winter and come the good weather in the spring they fly off and do butterfly things so this is the remains and we've got through ooh, over half of it now so a little bit more than I strictly needed but some of that will go this coming winter and we took the chance of getting the van up the field because there's been a run of dry weather and if I took a run up I thought I could just about get up here and I did with a little bit of uh, rear wheel traction lost there and just enough momentum to get up the top and basically everything goes through the, the fence and when there's a weight on these they push down on here so hopefully it doesn't break the fence but most of the agenda today is doing some more felling and it sounds like there's somebody else cutting up there because I'm not the only one to cut in this woodland hopefully he's cutting some of the, uh, the hazel in the fenced areas and he's uh, bought it as a standing crop that would be my hope I don't get any benefit from that but hopefully the farmers get the benefit because what we want is for a wood that pays to stay it's an ancient woodland and it's always paid its way in the past it's only relatively recently since say the period between the wars and after World War II where it stopped paying Preparing timber for burning means that you need to get it down to below 20% moisture content. If you get it below 20% then it burns clean and it burns hot and it burns as efficiently as possible. You get as much bang as possible for your buck, your firewood buck. Some people on various sites on Tinterweb say that you need to season it for at least two years. Well, this has down, been down for two years. This time last year, this is early March 2025, this was stood like that over there, which I'm cutting at the moment for next year. And my usual plan is to cut it, stick it in a cord in the, in the side of the wood, and let the breeze blow through it, through the dead hedge for the whole of the summer. And then summer's end, take it back home in long lengths and log it up. <clears throat> but today there's been a almost freakish run of dry weather here in Dorset and I've just about been able with a little bit of skidding right at the top to get my old van out through that gate and then up to the top here and this is what I've cut I've been able to cut the really big bits the bits that you would expect to season and dry slower than the thin bits but as you can see we've got discoloration on the ends it's been left as uh, five foot lengths and we've got sporting summer's end and if kept under cover after summer's end all the way through November and all the way through Christmas it looks like this or this bit which has just started to sport and this is hazel different timbers behave differently but some of the sporting on this is becoming advanced the sporting is fungal action, fungi get in through the ends. Some would theorise that uh, if you're cutting up very old trees, the fungi are already in there but at a low level, kept in check by the tree itself. But anyway, they break down the wood, they break down the wood. You see my fingernail going into that. And turn it from cellulose which is a complex hydrocarbon basically complex sugar back to simple sugars which they can then digest and they give out co2 carbon dioxide and water like we do 
when we eat food and respire it. And you can see a fungal fruiting body coming out the end of this log. Depending on what fungi you've got, they go at different paces. You can see that's the other end of that, uh, that log. So it's basically a myth, certainly in the context in which I'm working, rainy old Dorset, that you need to season any wood for two years. This is uh, seasoning for burning. If you've got very, very big stuff, bigger than this, then potentially, if you leave it in a tree length, you need to season it for a long period of time. But I uh, don't know if you can see those tractors down there. The farmer's cutting up that big lump of um, ash which came down in a storm two years ago and was here. You can see its roots. And that was seasoned and ready by the following winter, the winter after it blew down. It blew down, the farmer chopped it off the stump. You can see the stump there by the reins of this fence. And then he put his fence back up, basically to keep his cattle in and out of the wood. And he pulled it out uh, the other day, last week in fact. So they've been down two years up on blocks. And that was a big lump, you can see by the size of the stump. So arguably, that might need two years to season. But basically, I don't think so. And certainly if you split it, and it's big stuff, immediately it's felled, you can have it seasoned and ready to burn, nice and dry, by the following winter, if you do it right. So it's a myth that this timber certainly needs two years to season. When it's been out one year, from March to the following March, it is starting to go off, even though it hasn't yet been logged. And hazel is a hard, dense wood. It's not as if it was crack willow or something like that. <laughs>